And now we get ready to rumble in Richmond. It's a long one to give you all I got. Let's go, boys. Let's get it done today. It's short track season, and Virginia is up next. We call it the Richmond Raceway. It's an electric atmosphere. This place is rocking. But guess what, guys? Now it's time to go racing. So buckle up and bet high, because Around the Track has everything you need to get Richmond ready. We ought to beat the battered stuff at the end of this one. Let's not be one of them. These guys are going to have their hands full. Do my very best for you guys, and you know what I need. Get after it all day long. Here we go. Welcome to Around the Track. I'm Kim Kuhn alongside of Ryan Flores and the Cup Series is headed to the short tracks. Richmond this weekend. Yeah, I'm ready to get back. Richmond is one of my favorite racetracks to go to and ever since they kind of redesigned the infield, it's just been so much fun to go. One of your favorite racetracks, not exactly your driver's favorite racetrack. Blaney, I know, gets a little frustrated there. H how do you prepare yourself for a weekend when you know the driver might get a little feisty on the radio? Well, I'd, I'd say Ryan's always a little feisty okay. on the radio, but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, we just go there and fight hard. We've been getting better at short tracks. We obviously won Phoenix uh, last year, and we've had some strong runs, and I'm just ready to go battle under the lights. Night races get me fired up. Yeah, and we're going to get you fired up with everything around the track, whether you're headed to Richmond or watching from home. One thing I'm fired up for is this modified yes. race on Friday night. So to get you guys ready and fired up as well, let's take a look at last year's action. Today, it is Richmond Speedway. This is a race that everyone circles on their calendar. We are green and racing at Richmond, modified style. It has been all Austin Beers out in front. Cecily in trouble, up the racetrack and off the groove. Doug Kobe, 1.8 second advantage over Ronnie Silk. Horton out of shape, he had to chase the car up the racetrack. Austin Beers takes back position number one. He is away with the lead and the win if he doesn't blow up. Checkered flag is waving and Austin Beers is a winner. It means everything to me. I'll never forget my first win. This is a tough division and uh, I'm so proud of it. You know the fans are ready for some short track action. Austin Beers taking home the win last year. You're the mods guy. Is he going to repeat? I don't know. The 64 team has been super strong. He just had his 21st birthday, Austin oh, wow. Beers. And, young uh, guy. Yeah, young guy. <laughs> but as strong as they were last year, they can definitely do it, but they're going to have to hold off. Justin Bonsignor, Ronnie Silk, mm -hmm. Doug Kobe. Hey, shout out to Luke Baldwin. We told you last week in the show. Yeah. Tommy Baldwin, youngest son. Yeah. He's not in the field this week, but they won a big race at South Boston Virginia. Took home $20,000. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that uh, 7 NY can, uh, can contend. But it's going to be super exciting no matter what happens. I'll be locked in my flow racing. I'll actually be there. I I Will won't you? even be on flow. I'm going to drive up there and watch okay, it race myself. Okay, you're going to watch. All right, you're going to see Bobby Labonte in the field, too, yep. as well as Ryan Newman. So let's check out the weekend schedule. So we'll have to see who takes the crown this year. The mods kick off at Richmond on Friday, like Ryan mentioned, on Flow Racing. You can also listen, though, on MRN Radio. We'll have the coverage for that on Friday. And, of course, the Xfinity Series Racing Saturday, as well as the Cup Series. All culminates Sunday, 7 p.m. So the second short track of the season and a little extra incentive for the Xfinity Series regulars. This weekend at Richmond, they can qualify for the first first dash for cash race at Martinsville. Yeah, the top four finishers, top four Xfinity Series regular finishers this weekend. We'll be racing for an extra hundred grand next week, so it should be pretty hot and heavy, the battle up front. And uh, the other thing that's going to be hot and heavy is Sunday night. Yes. I, haven't, I haven't had to race on Easter with the dirt race, having no pit stop, so I haven't been, but I am fired up and ready to get there Sunday night under the lights mm -hmm. at Richmond. Let's hear what the drivers have to say. It's a team racetrack. You have to have the right strategy. You have to have great pit stops. You have to have a great driver, um, and obviously a great car. You know, there's been a lot of shifting through uh, the last couple of years, and even that's a little borderline there just because of the, the lack of grip. It does move around a good amount, and you have some different options to, to run that uh, that racetrack to make speed. Um, and from a driver standpoint, that's you know, what I really like in racetracks. It's a driver's racetrack. Uh, the driver's feet and inputs with the steering wheel and on the pedals can play a huge impact on how the car handles, how the car drives, and most of all, how to manage your equipment. It is definitely a driver's racetrack, and the drivers will hit the track first at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, practice and qualifying, followed by the cup race Easter Sunday, 7 p.m. on Fox. 
Man, this race is so hard to win. It's the same package we just ran a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago at Phoenix. What are you looking forward to see? Well, you mentioned it being a driver's track. It's weird. It's a driver's track, but it's also, to Christopher Bell's point, a team track because to get to victory lane, you have to have everything executed perfectly, including pit stops. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot have any weak links. You have to keep track position all day. Your driver has to figure it out. With this tire, it's the mm -hmm. same tire we saw at Phoenix, thicker gauge rubber. That should make the track a little bit wider. We do. We have seen Richmond be a one lane track in the past, yeah, but also- we'll have a couple lanes. Yeah, we'll have a couple lanes, a couple options for the driver set as Christopher, as Chris Boucher said, Christopher Boucher, I'm getting a little Dale Jr. on yeah. there. But no, nonetheless, it's going to be super exciting. Yeah, and um, we mentioned that short track package. We saw it debut in Phoenix. It wasn't raced at Bristol. So before we get into the depth, about how you can win at Richmond. Let's take a deep dive into that new short track package we'll see again this weekend. I'm here in Concord, North Carolina at the NASCAR R&D Center in front of the NASCAR submission car. This car is used to test the Ford, the Chevrolet, and the Toyota bodies. It's also used in wind tunnel testing to try different components when it comes to rules changes. In front of me, you have all the different changes. Splitters that were used in the wind tunnel for the short tracks. This is the rear floor. This is the middle of the car going towards the rear bumper. The big difference for the race fans is how it will look from behind. The normal diffuser has multiple vertical fencings that come down. You can see it all the way at the tail of the car. This one, only two of those vertical straights and much shorter, almost hidden underneath the rear bumper cover. The other change to go along with this rules update is the rear spoiler. It used to basically be at the top of this carbon fiber panel. Now it's about an inch wider on each side and an inch taller, trying to add back a little of the downforce that the rear floor took away. The combination of these two are gonna change how the car is handled. So like I mentioned, like we just heard Steve Letarte say, this debuted in Phoenix, we saw it in Phoenix, although not everybody considers Phoenix a short track, a true short track. And then we didn't have it at Bristol, which is a short track, so now, I feel like this might be the true test, the first true test. Would you agree? Yeah, Richmond definitely races more like a short track than Phoenix does. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit slower. It's definitely slicker. Uh, so we'll see. There's always comers and goers at Richmond. Uh, you see guys who kind of haul the mail the mm -hmm. first part of the run, then fall back, and guys that 50, 60 laps in start making hay and run to the front. So it just depends on who gets their car right, if it's a short run, if it's a long run. We have been seeing a lot of green flag stops at short yeah. tracks. So. It could be a mixed bag and anything can happen this Sunday and night. And the good news is we've got two back-to-back -back short track races. So we've got Richmond and Martinsville next weekend. So they're going to learn a lot about this short track package in the next two weeks. Yeah, and it seems like the simple diffuser has promoted passing. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they can run a little closer together and we'll see if the guys get a little rowdy on Sunday night. Join Todd Gordon and myself each week for NASCAR Inside the Race. We'll break down exactly how the race was won. Plus, we'll dive into the data and go in-depth on race strategies, penalties, and rule changes. Catch NASCAR Inside the Race presented by Consumer Cellular each Tuesday on NASCAR's YouTube channel. So one of the big hot topics this year has been tire fall. We saw that at Bristol. Will we see it at Richmond this weekend? I don't know if it'll be as drastic as it was at Bristol, but Richmond is known for mm -hmm. its tire fall off. I'm not real sure, <laughs> but we got two past winners here that'll tell you all about it. The surface is uh, worn out a lot. It wears tires out very quickly. Um, takes grip out of the tire very quickly to the point where we have these uh, these long runs where you're really trying to get forward drive in the car. You know, you're talking about running, you know, 60, 70 laps on tires at Phoenix and having, you know, have to one second to fall off. And at Richmond, you'll get that in 10 laps, eight laps, you know. So um, just the tire wear factor is so different there, so unique. So you saw Martin Jones Jr. specifically mentioned tire wear there. It's definitely going to be a big part of the race. Maybe not the first stage, which is 70 laps, but then the second stage, the final stage, 160 laps, 170 laps. And we've seen different strategies in the past. We've seen kind of breaking the stage up into two parts and three parts. Seven pit stops the last time we came here, so that's quite a bit. And pit road's pretty unique here, so it's definitely challenging. It's a, it's a, not, it's a short pit mm -hmm. box and 30 feet that long, yeah. but it's 20 feet wide. So to jump out and get out to your car, there's turns on pit roads. Sometimes it's hard to see your car. So, definitely challenging and you are always just like one caution away like martin said mm -hmm. 10 laps 12 laps if you run 12 hard laps you're coming in for another set but you're one caution away from just having to be ready to go all the time well yeah and that begs the question like how many stops we will see it's going to be a lot and the attention is going to be put on the cruise because you have to imagine every time a driver has the opportunity they're going to come in for four tires yeah and even if it's not a caution you know green flag pit stops and you have to execute well 
on green flag pit stops to keep yourself in the race. We saw we had trouble last year here with a wedge wrench. We're doing a left side adjustment here. Trevor will stick the left side wrench. We'll come around. Jordan goes to grab the wrench. Oh. Doesn't get it out. Trevor tried to get oh. it. Valiant effort, but uh, two, two, two men down. So if that if that's a if that's under you know yellow flag, not a big We just deal. go to the end of the longest line. Deal. But if yeah. you have a, if you have trouble and you have to re pit under green flag pit cycle, there is no doubt at this track that you are going a lap down. It's not as forgiving as a place like Coda was last yeah. week. So you got to keep yourself in the race all day long on pit road on the track. And if you do, even if you do a great job. If there's a caution with 10 to go, it's money stop yeah. time. And there's been at least three green flag pit stops the last seven Richmond races. So the pressure is on you. Ooh, ooh, well, a... I, I, I like to say the pressure should be on the team, should it not? Because if the crew chief gets the car right for the weekend, less likely to make a mistake because you're not having to put a chassis wrench in it. Yeah. I, hey, <laughs> right right there. If, you didn't, if we didn't have to make an adjustment, we wouldn't have that yeah. problem. But it's part of the job. But like I said, as long as you, if you execute all day long, it looks like you're going to win. I was on the 39 car mm -hmm. here back in the day when it looked like we were going to win, punch our way to the playoffs. Clint Boyer spun out, Ooh. and then we had a pit with like three to go. We lost the lead. So you got to be on your game all day long. And hey, like we talk about on Stacking Pennies. Mm -hmm. You can either the dogs of the week or the woes of the week. Which Ooh. section are you going to be on? So we'll have to find out. Let's hope you're in the dog section. Like, amen. Yeah. Well, now that we've set you up for the race weekend, gotten you all the information you need, it's time to make our fantasy picks. So let's start with must haves for Richmond. My must-have, he's won three of the last nine races here, Martin Shrex Jr. More importantly than that, he's in a Toyota, <laughs> right? And we've been all we've been talking about is package, 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 and this is the same one they ran at Phoenix, and the Toyotas dominated that race. He's our points leader. I am ready and excited to see this team have a great day and go to victory lane. Well, I, Truex caught my eye when I was considering, like, who to pick, but... I had to go with this teammate. Another Toyota driver, though, Denny Hamlin. He's a four-time winner at Richmond. But what really stands out to me is I know the tire wear is not going to be as extreme as it was at Bristol, but he shown over the entire field. His tire management was so good there. He's also led in the last seven races at Richmond. So I think he is a must-have when it comes to your fantasy lineup. Home track for him, too. Home yeah. track for yeah. DH. We'll so. see if he gets boos or cheers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it could go knows? either way. Who knows? But uh... – in your garage. Who are you keeping in your garage all this week? All right. This might surprise some people, but I'm going with Josh Berry. He had a good showing at Bristol. We talk about, again, the tire wear, tire management. He's a short track kid. That's how he got his start in racing. You look back last year when he was thrown into the cup car, career best finish at Richmond of second. Now, he's in my garage because I'm just not sure what he's going to be able to do. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm kind of just having him in waiting. What about you? That second place run for him last year was super impressive here. And he had a great run at Bristol. Mm -hmm. So his stock's high right now. Yeah. I think that's a great pick. The only problem, he's not in a Toyota. Oh. Uh, I'm going Toyota heavy this okay. week, and, and it's Bubba Wallace. They they led laps here last year. He's he comes from short tracks. He's I've seen him run strong on every short track in the country, no matter what he runs in. So I think this could be a week. I don't want to start him because I don't know how how he's going to be, mm -hmm. but he's definitely someone I want to have close and ready to put in. You know, before that second stage, if I have to. Okay, okay, I like it. All right, we're going to look at one of the head-to-head -head matches for this weekend as well. Willie B, William Byron, the most recent winner in the Cup Series versus Denny Hamlin. I think we could call Denny the short track king at this point. He, he's very good when it comes to short track. So this head-to-head -head battle, who are you picking? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it a third time. He's in a Toyota. I'm going DH. Okay. The 24 team, you don't pull on Superman's cape, right? He's yeah. got the most wins in the yeah. next-gen car. I think that William Byron is the best driver of the next-gen era. Mm -hmm. But... Danny Hamlin yeah. at Richmond in a Toyota. You already picked him, I, so I know who you're going with. I know. With. I'm going with Hamlin, too. I feel like I might be kicking myself after the weekend just because I think Byron and Rudy Fugel, they surprise us sometimes. Yeah. And so it, we probably shouldn't be surprised if he does well this weekend, but it's hard to argue against Hamlin. I'm not betting against Toyotas. I'm saying it for a fourth time, and that's the last time I'm yeah. saying it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, I mentioned Josh Berry as my garage pick and he's had a lot of good experience at Richmond on the Xfinity side of things running for JRM and Junior Motorsports so strong so dominant when it comes to the short track in the Commonwealth of Virginia.
success at Richmond with multiple drivers over the years, but this season has not been their season. They have not kicked off 2024 great. So is this the place they can finally get things in gear? Yeah, I mean, I think they're one blown left rear away at Phoenix True. From, it, from it being a good year. And we're going back to a track that's similar to Phoenix. So Justin Allgaier is always strong on short tracks. You had uh, Sam Mayer, Sammy Smith, and Brandon Jones to that mix. They lean on Justin Allgaier. Yeah. He's, the, he's the elder statesman of that team. He's the leader of that team. So I think this is a place they can race the ship. Yeah, I think, you know, if somebody's going to make waves here from the JRN camp, it's going to be... Justin Allgaier, although, you know, Sammy Smith, he won at Phoenix last year. Maybe he could get the job done. Brandon Jones, also good at short tracks. Sam Mayer is the one I'm very worried about, only because his season has been so dismal to start with. Can he finally just, like, scrape himself out of the hole that he has been in? Well, as we look at the wins per team here, they came over from JGR. Mm -hmm. They kind of did a couple drivers, did a swap from yeah. JGR to Junior Motorsports. Junior Motorsports second behind Joe Gibbs Racing, with his nothing to be ashamed of because Joe Gibbs also has the most cup wins here. And JRM is not a cup-affiliated team. They're the only one of the top five that, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't have a, a cup car in the field each week. So with six wins, I think this is a place they can rate the ship, and they'll have a fifth car yeah, this Yeah, yeah, they got one more opportunity to have a good finish with a fifth driver, Bubba Pollard, running this weekend. Why, why did Junior tap Bubba? Bubba Pollard is the, the short track guy, okay. right? In the southeast, when it comes to super late models, he has won everything there is to win. He's just such a strong short track guy. And Dale Jr. has, you know, he's a, he's a late model guy. We hear him talk on his podcast a lot about the Cars Tour, which Bubba's going to run yeah. this year, super late models. And, and Bubba's won everything. So that's why I think he's tapped to run this 88 car this weekend. Some of his stats there. Again, he's making his debut at Richmond. Finished third in ARCA East debut last weekend. Is this a little bit of an audition then? I don't know if it's an audition. I think he's kind of past uh, okay. past, past, past where he's going to do it full time. <laughs> I'm sure that if a ride came available and if he does well here and wins the race, it could be like I would think people would say the same thing for Josh Perry. Like he was never going to mm -hmm. make it or have a career. And now he's running the, you know, he's filling it. He has taken the reins from Kevin Harvick. One of my best friends, though, Hot Pockets, Brian Kramer, he went and spotted for Bubba this weekend at, in the ARCA race. And he says, he says Bubba's fired up for this weekend, okay. so we'll see. All right, well, we're going to have action Friday, Saturday, and it all culminates Sunday night with the Cup Series race. All right, here we go in Richmond. Got a long day ahead of us, but I'm ready for the grind. Good luck, boys. Get us another Richmond trophy. Green flag is out. We're racing in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Kyle Larson hunting the lead. Cautions, green cautions, boys. Oh, look out, way of fire is around and into the outside wall. Side by side, Truex to the bottom. 19 is jamming up everybody. You got room to work here. First win of the season for Kyle Larson. Not a bad little 30th birthday present, huh, guys? I'd say it's so. a hell of a job. Each weekend, we help you place the best bets of the race. It is Easy Money with E, so we're going to welcome in our resident sports betting analyst, Erica Davis. And I really hope you listened to her last week, because if you did, she won you some cold, hard cash. Erica, great picks for Coda last weekend. I got a sound effect for you, Kim, and it goes cha-ching. I love it. <laughs> uh, Coda was great for me. Three of my best bets hit. My outright winner for Byron hit. I had to head hit. And then Reddit finishing in the top 10 hit. So as the kids like to say, I was in my bag last weekend at Austin. Yeah, you did a great job. But now we're setting up for short track season. It is Richmond on the docket for this weekend. And as we look at the head-to-head -head bat, I love this. Kyle Busch versus Christopher Bell. We saw some sparks fly at the end of the Coda race. How is that going to carry over into this weekend? I think it's going to carry over really nicely. I'm here for the controversy, which is why... Um, C Bell versus Kyle Bush and that head to head is my first best bet where C Bell is minus 230, Bush is plus 170. And honestly, I'm drawn to this because of the confrontation. Is Kyle Bush going to go into this weekend at Richmond trying to get retaliation against Christopher Bell? And if that is the case, we saw that when Bush confronted Christopher Bell last week, C Bell didn't back down. So I think that Bell is going to go into Richmond with that attitude, with that energy, and he's not going to let Bush bully him on the track. So I'm going to take C Bell at minus 230, where a $10 bet wins you a total of $14.35 in this head to head. Well, Richmond is a place where JGR always shines. Is that going to affect the bet you place when we look at top fives? So, yeah, so a few weeks ago, I was super high on Denny Hamlin. This week, I'm super high on JGR. So let's start with my first top five bet, which is Ty Gibbs at plus 100, where a $10 bet wins you a total of $20. Kemp, every single week, I'm watching how he runs, and I'm like, 
is this the week that Same. Ty Gibbs is going to win? Every right, week, I'm like, right. is he going to win? <laughs> <laughs> right. So this could be the week that he actually wins. And his um, his outright winner's odds are actually plus 850. I'm going to stop a little short of picking him as my outright winner. And I'm going to put my money on his top five odds. I mean, he has five straight top tens this year. He's got three top five finishes in the last four races. So a $10 bet again, $20. Ty Gibbs, plus 100. My first best bet. My second one is the guy we all love to hate, but I love him because he makes me money, is Denny Hamlin. Um, he's minus 175, $10 bet, $15.71 will be your total payout. Finished 14th at Coda last week. You know, Richmond is more his speed, short track. This is his home track, right, Kim? Um, I think he's a better bet for a top five finish here. He's won here four times, and he's finished in the top four in five of the last six Richmond races. So I'm back in Hamlin at minus 175, yeah. Okay, so you got Ty, you got Hamlin. What about maybe a third guy? Who's your third guy for the best bet, top five? Well, sticking with the JGR theme, I'm going with Seabell here, who's also at minus 175 to have a top five finish. Um, in August of 2022, he got his career best finish here when he finished in second. So he also got his win this year already at Phoenix, and he finished second at Austin last week, Kim. So I think that Seabell has some momentum. He's got a hot hand as well this season. So he's going to ride that into Richmond and finish in the top five, minus 175 Seabell. All right, well, you are riding this JGR wave, and as we head into the group bets, there's a bet where it has all four JGR drivers. Is this unusual to see a, a full team in a group bet? Yeah, I think it's unusual, at least this season, to see an entire team in a group bet. Kim, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt it to you. Like, who would you pick of this group to finish ahead? Uh, my instinct says Hamlin, but I, I kind of want to maybe pick Truex. So it probably would be between the two of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the, the Truex bet. Um, plus 300, $10 bet wins you a total of $40. He has had a hot hand this year as well. Um, like, like Denny, though, he has won at this track, and he's also led laps at this track. Again, you have to shop around to make sure you get the best value because I've seen plus 205 for Denny and Seabell, and I've seen plus 210. I've seen plus 320 for Truex. I've seen plus 300. But at plus three hundred, ten dollar bet will win you a total of forty dollars on Truex. Let's go there with him winning this group. I'm gonna close my eyes and cross my fingers. I wouldn't be mad if you pick someone someone else in this group though. Well, I think you have strong bets. Any JGR driver you pick, they've got eighteen wins as a team at Richmond, the most of any organization. So good thinking on the JGR bets this weekend. Erica, thank you so much. You're gonna be in studio with us next week, right? Super excited to see you live and in person in one week. Yeah, Eric will be in studio next week getting us ready for another short track, Martinsville. Well, it's obviously going to be an action-packed race weekend both on and off the racetrack this weekend at Richmond Raceway. NASCAR leaning into all the family activities, stuff for the kids, because it is a holiday celebrating Easter this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. A petting zoo, mm -hmm. plenty of opportunities to uh, get, get pictures with the Easter Bunny. I heard a cup driver might even be reading a book. Oh, yeah. Eric Jones on Sunday is going to do a little reading for the kids, maybe some Peter Cottontail. I don't know, Peter Rabbit. But my question is, will the Easter Bunny be a creepy Easter Bunny or like a cute Easter Bunny? I hope it's a couple, but I, okay. I definitely hope there's a creepy one because I think that that's just so much funnier for the pictures when they when the kids get older. And will he be in a fire suit? Will the Easter Bunny be wearing a fire suit? I'm not sure, but I'm sure that you can find out at richmondraceway.com <laughs> slash fan guide and you'll be able to see everything that's going on this weekend. But I'm ready for the white flag, Kim. Okay. And this week we're going to add to our nugget okay. tray. Are you ready for this? I, I got the question. Know. This is always, whenever it's me getting asked the question, I always start sweating. This is a tough one. Okay. So we went to Chuck Bush. Oh, well. Who we yes. should already know it's going to be tough if Chuck came up with Yes, it. and he said, that we, we asked him what the first race was on Easter in NASCAR. It was in 1953, and the winner was Dick Passwater. Okay. Where was this race held? Oh, okay. And you're talking anywhere in the country? Yeah, well, just talk about here. In the southeast? In, in Charlotte. In Charlotte. In Charlotte. Um, you're never going to get it, because I, I wouldn't. I... It, I don't even know the racetrack besides Charlotte Motor Speedway that's in Charlotte. So there's a three-quarter mile dirt track called Charlotte Speedway. Okay. It's a few miles west of the NASCAR Hall of Fame off Little Rock Road. Okay. That's where the first ever Easter race was so held. Like near the airport. Yep. And, and hey, fun fact, 
They had to shut it down in uh, 1956 because I-85 was oh, getting constructed right, right through, through their parking lot. So Dang. there's your nugget for the week. There was a ton of racetracks around the Charlotte area back then. I feel like I, I missed my generation yeah. racing every night of the week. but. I liked that because I learned something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I've so that, that's a that's a good nugget. <laughs> it's a good nugget. We appreciate you watching each and every week at Around the Track. Yeah, and we're ready for Sunday night. Hope you guys have a great Easter, but be sure to tune in Sunday night, Richmond. We'll see you next week to preview Martins.